Good morning, fourth graders. Well, today we're going to be reviewing lesson 4.6, which is investigating using the distributive property to do division. And the reason why I want to revisit this as part of your morning work is because I think this is such a valuable strategy to use to solve division problems when you need an exact answer, not an estimated one. So here's an example that we have on this page that is 54 divided by 3. And in all honesty, I have no clue what 54 divided by 3 is. But I know that if I take 54 and I break it apart into two multiples of 3 that are smaller, I could recognize the answers or the quotients. Now, a lot of you are still having trouble finding, for instance, we're looking at the 5 and the 5 is not a multiple of 3, so we can't use 50. But we can use multiples of 3, and we can use multiples of 3 that are multiples also of 10. So if I was to make a list of multiples of 3 over here that are also multiples of 10, which means it's 3 times 10, 3 times 20, you would easily see that if we were counting by 3, we would have 30. The next number would be 60. and 90 and 120 and what I'm doing as you can see is the fact that you can see that I'm counting by threes 3, 6, 9 and 12 but I'm also counting them as multiples of 10 which means I have the zero at the end so we can look for these kind of multiples no matter what the divisor is you can do multiples of 4 that would be 40, 80, 120 we could do multiples of 5, 50, 100, 150. In every case, we're counting by the number, but we're also doing multiples of 10 with that. And I want to get back to just seeing what they did here. So what they did was they, 54, they looked at it and said, well, we can pull out a multiple of 3 times 10, which is 30. And when I subtract 30 from 54, what comes out is another multiple of 3 that I recognize which is 24. So let me solve the smaller division problems first, because I know 30 divided by 3. I don't know 54 divided by 3, but I know 30 divided by 3. That's easy. That's 10. And what was left of 54 after I divided the 30 amount was 24, because I know 30 plus 24 is 54. So I have to also do the 24 part divided by 3, and that is 8. Then all I have to do is add the quotients, the 10 plus the 8, and together they add to 18, which is the answer to 54 divided by 3. We did the same thing, folks, when we did difficult multiplication and broke apart the large factor um, that was over here. And it works the same way in division. So let's look at 81. Now right here, 81, I'm not sure what, uh, 88 is not a multiple of 3, but I'm thinking multiples of 3 that are larger than just 3, 6, 9. So I'm going to make them multiplied by 10, and I'm going to go 30, 60, 90. Now I noticed here, and I'll make it larger over here, 81 divided by 3. Now remember, we just counted by 3's, but multiples of 10. 30, 60, 90. 90 is too much. I don't have that. But 60 I have. So if I break apart 81 into a multiple of 3 that I know, which is 60, plus what adds with 60 to make 81, and I can see that is 21 because 60 plus 21 is 81. Both of those numbers, I know how to divide those by 3. So what do I do? I do 60 divided by 3, which you can write it out as 60 divided by 3 with parentheses, plus um, 21 divided by 3 in parentheses. All right, and we add those two quotients together. So 60 divided by 3, well, I'm going to think of a simpler problem. 6 divided by 3, I know that's 2, but it isn't 2 if I'm dividing 60. It's 20. And the quotient for 21 divided by 3, well, that's a fact. So I'm going to, I know that 21 divided by 3 is 7. Why? Because 3 times 7 is 21. When I add 20 plus 7 together, the quotient from this portion 
and the quotient from this portion, I get the full answer of 27. And the answer to 81 divided by 3 is 27. So let's get another clear workspace going here. And I'll erase these really quickly. And remember to pick up my brush this time. So let's do another one. Here's a big one. Here is a three digit number, 232 divided by 4. Well, let's think about that. 232 divided by 4. We're going to find a multiple of 4 that is close to 232 but does not go over. That's very important. We can't go above 232. Now remember our strategy. We're going to underline 23 and just look at those two numbers. Now if you're good with your fours times table, you would know the multiple of 4 that is just below 23 in value. But if you don't know your multiplication tables, you need to study them five to ten minutes every night, guys. But if you don't, use your chart, go down the fours times table until you get to a multiple that is closest to 23 without going over. And you'll notice that that multiple is 20. But we have a three-digit number here. So if we're breaking apart 232, we're not going to add, we're not going to break it apart into 20 plus 32. We have to make this 20. It's really 20 tens because of where it is in the number. It's place values. This is in the hundreds column, this 2. So this 2 is 200, not 20. And then we know easily that two, to make 232, we would have to add the other part, which is the 32 part. Now, both of those numbers, I know how to divide by 4. 20 divided by 4, and I'm not going to write it out in the the distributive property form here. I'm just going to do it in my head. 20 divided by 4 is 5, but not 5 because I'm not dividing just 20. It's 200. So this is 50. And then plus 32 divided by 4. And you might have to use your multiplication chart, but if you know your fours times table, 32 divided by 4 is 8. And why is that? Because 4 times 8 is 32. Now all we have to do is add our two partial quotients together, because that's what they are. Remember, when we were doing multiplication, they were called partial products. But since we're doing division, they're called partial quotients. We add 50 plus 8, and we have our final exact answer of 58. I love this method. I hope you do too. We're going to do one more together, and then I'm going to ask you to work on the rest of the page by yourself. All right? because I think you can do this if you really take your time. So let's look at this next one. We have 305 divided by 5. Now I love this one because right away I noticed that there's a multiple of 5 right here in the first two digits and it's 30. But it's really not 30 because of where it is. This 3 is in the hundreds column so this isn't, shouldn't be considered 30 ones. It is actually 30 tens. So that makes 300, and then we have to, to make our complete dividend that we have, we have to make sure we're adding the 5 in there too. So now what we can do is we do 30 divided by 5, because remember, we have to distribute the 5 to both parts that we broke apart from the total dividend of 305. So 30 divided by 5, that's 6, but not 6 because this is 30 tenths. So this isn't 6, this is 6 tenths. So we're going to make that 60. And then 5 divided by 5, well remember that whenever a number is divided by itself, you will always get 1. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, 35 divided by 35 is 1. So now we have to add those two together, so 305 divided by 5 is 60. One. I'm hoping you're feeling a lot more comfortable with this method using the distributive property or the break apart method because I certainly love it and I think it's going to make doing division and it's going to help you a lot when you do start doing long division because basically when we're doing long division and we stack it up we're really doing the distributive property of division. Hope you have a great morning. Good luck with the rest of the page. I want you to do the rest of the page and try it on your own. If you need any help, come see me right away.